You are listening to Let's Go, the weekly anime podcast about weekly anime from Dynamite in the Brain and Secret of the Sailor Madness. So come along and hang with the Let's Go gang. It's Niall. Hurry. And it's me, Brian. Just us two this time. A rare Niall and Brian. So good up, folks. And on this week, we are covering the anime that aired the week of, those dates are wrong, um, October the 8th to October the 14th. That's the one that I didn't copy Correct. out of Discord. Starting with the solitary exception to that declaration, it's me and Robico, episode 27, Ideals and Robico. So my me, just double checking if the actual uh, <laughs> model slash media personality in question came on as herself in this. <laughs> she did, yes. <laughs> hey, all right. So this is based on the chapter where Robico has... She's got an ideal for herself now, and that ideal is model slash TV presenter uh, Arn Mika. Mm-hmm. And she's going to model herself on her, like, and we like, uh, all, like the products that she had out at the time of the comic coming mm-hmm. out, a uh, calendar and various things. These are the things she's going to model. Positivity. Herself on. Like, she's, like, she's from Kansai. She has a kind of, to be a kind of down to earth kind of Kansai way of talking to her, but she's so, like, you know, seems ethereal and beautiful. It's like she's got it all. So, take Bondo, take me to the airport. I'm off to Paris. She gets taken to the airport and then she doesn't get on a plane. She just flies using her <laughs> head propellers. Um, but you got to get duty free, you know, you're still available of that one over there. And she comes back transformed very much like Arn Mika because while she was away, she found the human human fruit type Arn Mika <laughs> and ate it. Uh, <laughs> The God of Revolution on Mika. Yeah. Well, I think this is, I think this chapter came out before that reveal. But well, obviously, there's been human, human other types because. Uh, oh, well, Chopper uh, is there. No, yeah. Chopper, Chopper is a big regular one. Yes. Um, uh, Son Goku has um, his, uh, his fruit. One. Is, yeah. Is, that's a legendary Zoan human, human fruit. Uh, so we it, it didn't come out of nowhere with Mika. It had been foreshadowed. Very human on Mika. Mm. Many moves before, yes. And so now she's Robico, but she's on Mika's shape. And she, now on Mika is doing the voice. But every so often it glitches, and you hear the original <laughs> Robico voice come in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, again, like you know, <laughs> the thing is about Derek Gadden. Maybe, maybe me and Robico throws an unsettling image actually in once an episode. They never really caught him up. Um, yeah, all good for a very specific joke that if you're not in Japan, will require you to run to Wikipedia to fully understand it. Yeah, imagine how uh, baffled we were when we were reading the thing uh, when that came out. Well, oh, you momentarily froze it up there, but that might be my end. Yeah, okay. Ooh. yeah that's uh, that's me authoring last week's episode. Um, yeah. to upload, uh, then. We've got modern anime that came out this week. Spy Family, episode 26. Follow Mama and Papa. Mm. Your has returned home, having been shot in the ass. But she's uh, not hiding it very well at all. No. Uh, I assume she's had the bullet taken out. Uh, but probably just, probably just, she got the dumb lungs to let her knives. She probably just, just dug it out with that. But man, it's yeah. still, like, still smart skipping on like a bullet in the arse, you know? Yes, and Lloyd thinks she's because of the comedically angry look on her face that she's mad at him, and so therefore he needs to solve this. Let's go out on a date. Whereas Anya can read the minds of both of them, and so therefore she's going to follow them and pretend to be a spy with the help of Scruffy. Okay, do this for world peace, and like, we've done this enough times, you know, if he's bored and spit and call out of the blue phone saying, you gotta, you gotta call him. I'm like a fucking, like, government secret operative, man. It can't be from his mind and kids just whenever you feel like it. Hey, Scruffy, you wanna go on an adventure? Hell, hell yeah, I do. Let's do. Because we're disguises. Oh, this is kick ass. Yeah, this is the story where I kind of now want it to be that Frank is the one who is the first person to discover that Anya's psychic. Um... <laughs> Like the guy 80s film, you know, oh, yes, <laughs> me and just the psychic because, kid. 
I feel like he wouldn't tell anybody straight away. He'd want to somehow use that for his benefit. Before He'd use it to pick up else. chicks. He loves, like, you know, being in the service and uh, any opportunity to put on a disguise because he can disguise, you know, himself as, like, an, an attractive dude to go pick up chicks. Um, yeah, so they follow them around as they go on to various date topics uh, or things to do on a date. The only problem is is that your refuses to sit down at any of them. Yeah, so it comes across like she's just like tot totting and saying no to everything. It's like, really? No, nothing. No, it doesn't. He's spiraling. He doesn't know what's going to happen. That's okay. Well, maybe it's a nice restaurant. We got something nice to eat here and it'll be grand. Uh, unbeknownst to her, a survivor from her last hit. It's like, oh my goodness, all my buddies were killed. I thought I'd go straight and just be a waiter, but she's back. It must be a sign. I'm going to poison her drink. So and I'm my fallen comrades. For future purposes, uh, he's from Red Circus. Uh huh. Uh, a name which will become more important later on in the series. Yeah. For now, it's just we need some kind of stand in. What would be a good name for like a revolutionary group who, you know, might need somebody neutralized? Oh, yeah, that'll do. Uh, well, it's, you know, if his comrades will not be avenged, your and her line of work has like, uh, taken her share of poisons and has quite a, quite a tolerance to them. So all it has is this like, nice numbing sensation, helpfully in her arse, and she can finally relax. Uh, so then, because he's the, the uh, blowfish poison has not worked, uh, the, uh, he's going to build a bomb. He thinks he thinks. Oh, there's all these things. That's quite. It's, 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 it's skipping a, a, a couple of things there. You know, it just goes from like like a, a subtle poisoning to explosive. You know, we're going to try anything else there, not to raise too much attention to yourself. Uh, because Anya's reading his mind because they've, he, she's managed. They were turned away from the restaurant because Frankie was too scruffy and Anya's too young to come in the restaurant. But as she's leaving, she reads the mind about the poisoning, so she convinces Frankie to let them break in. Uh, they're, they're doing the die hard, crawling through the uh, air ducts. She yeah. hears the guy think, well, I'm going to build a bomb now. Here's all the things I need to build a bomb. And you gets there first and builds a bomb of her own uh, and signs it with peanuts. Um, and she just does, does the, the, the fucking whole like one Batman thing. You know, I've, I've gone to the head fucking behind you. You can't see me. It's like, fun. oh my gosh, who are you? Listen. I'm here for the name of world peace. You shouldn't be building bombs because you're a bad man. Uh, yeah, so think as, as a six-year-old can be, you know, <laughs> watching too many action movies. Yeah, I guess I think she, the idea was that he was going to make some sort of uh, dust explosion because it seems to be powder that she, uh, flour that she's used to uh, mm. make the bomb. Uh, the thing, the one thing which put me off doing food technology was learning about uh, dust explosions in the first year of university, <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, food science it is." A, a, a grain silo just like taking off like a rocket. Yeah, yeah, that happened when I was at um, uh, Golden West. The top of the flour silo exploded and covered the car park in flour. Um, one of the accountants uh, drove to work in a convertible and she hadn't put her roof up <laughs> and, and then it rained Ooh. and there was very little sympathy for her. The sand cheesecake. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, but the day's now going great because of the effect of the poison uh, had an analgesic effect on the uh, gun wound. Mm. And so, because this is the thing, we get your thoughts as well, is that she's annoyed that, that she can't enjoy all these nice things that Lloyd's taking her out to that she's never experienced because mm -hmm. when she was growing up, she was always having to be the parent to her little brother. And or kill people. Yes, we should have mentioned that part. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so yeah, she was actually enjoying the day. So, uh, and of course... The house is safe because the uh, security uh, organization is defending it. Uh, was it President Chimera Bond and Agent? Uh, Agent Penguin. Yeah. 
not scared up. He's like, he's got his, his badges of metal as a minor from battle. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. I, I remember this like, chapter, all right, but it, uh, it was a good, just like one to kind of plant right here because it's a good reintroduction to the whole farce of the thing. It's like, ah, oh, yes, I get it now. Yeah, this is one of the extra missions. Mm. Yeah. The bonus chapters. Uh, really fun front loading the two with that uh, opening sequence too. It's something else. It is. I realised the the first opening had a lot of fan uh, mads made of it, and I was like, "Good luck doing this one." Uh, but also, I'm sure people will try, and I suspect they'll get better at animation by tracing a Masaki Uasa animation. <laughs> Well, I saw like the uh, sort of green screen version of this uh, go out there. I've been shared around recently, so they're they're coming. They're working on stuff, tinkering yeah. away. It's mad geniuses. Uh, then we've got Dark Gathering, episode fourteen, Old F Tunnel. Slightly confused because next week's episode is called Old Old Old, old F Tunnel. <laughs> uh, uh, mm-hmm. So I'll there's take a tunnel. Pick. Uh, uh, Katara, uh, which one are you more freaked out by? Is this like this one's got kind of like you know dreads on it, but here this one's got like a, a consistent level of kind of is kind of pumping out right now. So it's probably gotta be where it's at. I'm more scared of that one. So, okay, okay, here we go. We're, 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 this is going to be a mission now. Echo, you haven't been on these before. We're just going to lay out all the fun, the game plan for this, and uh, sure, get, lay us the lay us the lore of the place on us. If I'm saying, oh yeah, well, there's lots of scary stories associated with this. Up to and including, uh, there's a mirror there, and it'll, it'll if, if you see a reflection in it, um, if yeah, the person in there is fitted to is fitted to die or be doomed. Uh, there's like the a family was murdered there nearby, and the axe killer, you know, his spirit still haunts the tunnel, and he cuts your fucking your body into bits. Uh, t- a few other kind of ones that I'm sure will kind of will pop up as they become relevant, uh, you know, within the the whole job here. Uh, but what did you know? It's the first thing that happens. Echo looks in the mirror that shouldn't be there, and just like, and they just walk into the tunnel. But she's also walking into the tunnel, but she's being left behind. It's like, oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, also, Yoi rushes Katara into the tunnel, which is explained later, uh, because. It turns out later that Yoi had realized that Aiko had disappeared, and that the Aiko that was with them is a ghost pretending to be Aiko, but didn't want Kitaro to, but Kitaro hadn't realized it. So if she attacked it then, then uh, he might try and prevent her, and uh, it would cause problems. And we mm-hmm. need this ghost to lead us to wherever the other ghost has led Aiko. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was kind of caught in the nonsense. It was like, do you like a. Uh... No, his hand you're holding? Yeah, yeah. And do you feel that behind you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's that, that the dread sink into him, like, you know, for a few minutes. Because uh, Aiko finds a YouTuber down the tunnel, and uh, they go up and down this tunnel together. They can't get out the tunnel. He just keeps slipping back in and it's tough. Oh, and you um, see, you know, this is what, what it warmed me up, is either a place that we're from, it'll kill you, or you'll never be able to escape from it. Possibly both uh, in this situation. Yes, and clearly AK should have played paid much more attention during uh, anatomy in biology class when she they keep on seeing things on the ground where I'm going, those are human organs. Why do you <laughs> think they're fish eggs? It's like you wouldn't know if on a pair of lungs, uh, someone's liver, the intestines <laughs> coming in. And then like the the YouTuber then is just like, oh, this is other bit of the story, you know, but they keep getting interrupted by like stuff happening or or to try and move the subject off it so you don't get bored to walk and freaked out but then i realize oh there's the worst thing that he does to you isn't that it kills her is that he just cuts bits off you like what but what one by one like bits you like you know one it'll hurt like fuck but you can still like survive and experience more pain he's just cutting more bits off of you it's like oh, oh shit and i was one of those girls <laughs> and as i was dying my friend came back into the hotel to save me, and I just wanted, and I, I was happy because I wanted to see her get killed as well, so we'd be here together. Mm. Uh, and it turns out the fake Aiko is said friend. Um, and this thing kills you from bottom to top, 
and then takes your face and wears it. Mm. And so I think the girl is the ghost of the tunnel, and this is some other ghost that has invaded the tunnel by the time we get to the end. And it's attacks, it fights the other ghost and cuts her face off and wear, it's wearing a human face, but then they get into a fight, cuts the ghost face off and puts the ghost over its face. Yeah, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Which gives Aiko a momentary reprieve until a whole load of faces appear and drag her into the old, old F tunnel, just as our heroes are getting there to save her. And and then it's like fun, son of a bitch, got axe murderer ghost is taunting us. He wants us to go in there. We'll fucking we'll sort him out. I'll tell you what. Uh, the other ghost got punched in the head with uh, her thimble again. Um, I need to have that around. And unfortunately, the thumbnail for the next episode spoils the surprise of which graduate they're going to use to fight this because he's bang there on the thumbnail. <laughs> no, that's like not passing the coin. Yeah, uh, like she's a kind of like messed up ghost, you know. But you usually like, you know, this is how they looked when they died. Uh, how you looked when you died was that you had most of your organs removed from the skin peeled off your face, like this is fucking Hellraiser or some shit. That's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty gnarly. Um, it's slow, but again, pretty consistent in delivering that episode to episode, yeah. Uh, did, well, I I definitely, uh, yeah, she definitely got the scare she was after. Um, mm-hmm. I think, like, you know, this is going to turn celibate on this stuff for life. Uh, uh, I suppose yeah. that, you know, maybe just like, you want bigger and bigger trillers until you can't handle it, Ego. No, when you've got an addiction, you got a problem. You need help. Yeah. I mean, I expect her to be incredibly happy by the end of this, though, because she's a freak, like the rest of them. But in a different, every, each, each of the three is a freak in a different sort of way. Um, so they'll, they'll probably be like, you know, okay, if well, it's cool, let you rent this and you get a rush off it, but it might say, look, when you can't be the fun kid, Tar was like, you know, trying to fun do up his paradise. And, he, and he's afraid he can't, you know, you gotta do more than just try to carry it. You can't just be the wheel woman. You gotta bring something else to this team, you know. Can you crack safes? Can you do what, can, what, what have you got? Yeah. So probably a bit of a bit of like, you know, like an upskilling of her a bit. So it's, because it's just the approach of it, you know, it wouldn't make sense to have her all the time be like, oh, I need saving. Oh, I need help. But I just fight the car, you know, get, get her involved a little bit better than that. Uh, then we got Help, episode 14, The Mercenaries. Can I remember any of these people's names? Uh, uh, no. Well, Adil is his uh, little... Um, his little buddy who he saved from the monster by just by punching it up after he defeated everybody else. And he's like the he's like the first angel he meets, like who's been reborn on the other side. Uh, and there's a girl with a holy sword that she's inherited from her family. Her grandfather may have been a previous hero. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but it's a uh, Alicia. Shocked. Yeah, she, yeah. She's shocked that Helk is stronger than her, and he doesn't even use weapons. And he just explains, "Hey, I'm just Helk the soldier." Uh, the only other thing to me is I used to be a construction worker. Did I just gotta flex my wounds closed? Uh, this, that, that. You shouldn't be able to do that. It's not like a normal like spell or anything anybody can do. Oh, well, I guess it's um, <laughs> just the way I am. Just constantly downplaying like the fantastic happenings of this. Like, um, but the monsters can keep coming. They keep getting worse. They're moving into towns. They're mussing them up. Um, to come out of all these towns, these mercenaries have like you know bailed out. You no, know, just uh, do do this like you know um, pro bono work. You know, for, for a good cause, great for the image of the company. And Hulk says, "I'm going to join up with you. Know, if if I like, fight monsters will help people, I'll do that." And his little buddy Adel comes along as well because uh, he's came to his little like fealty, his little like you know baronage was uh, destroyed by monsters, and including his uh, father and anybody else. He's an heir to the title now. So he's got to live up to his family name. And off to go with adventure and you know, they form such strong bonds with these guys. You know, you've got all your have types filled out there's a mage and an archer and like a, a big birdie dude, you know, all the kind of standard mercenary types, you know, on your, on your side. Uh, it's not enough though. Uh, to stem the tide of, of this monster war, so you gotta bring you know, class gets sent out an expedition. You gotta go to the source of this, you gotta kill the demon king, it's gotta be his fault, probably. Yeah, because it, it, it's 
from present day, it's becoming clear that, oh, did they mistake the... Um, the, uh, uh, the, the new world n- monsters the newly world. evolved monsters, or yeah. something like that. Like yeah, each 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 of them demons. think, oh, those are demons. No, 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 fun, no, fun. That's not us. Fun. Those, like we know what demons are. That's us. These aren't demons. Um, yes, and so they may have uh, attacked the wrong person. Um, mm. Yeah, and Kles comes back uh, gravely wounded, and then we learn that the. Doctor Who's safety when he was a kid is actually like the great sage of the human kingdom. Um, Again, good pro bono work is great for the image. Yes. Um, that, how, how does it end? Uh, well, it's, 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 like, uh, well it's, it's kind of like, you know, coming in between two things. It's just like, uh, so fucking test is fun. Defeated the Demon King for us. What a great achievement for, for humanity. He's been completely messed up. And I, I, I like how I like how how narrowly he is messed up because he's like complete, he's like kind of half shriveled up. He's got this fucking smash of gouge cut off with his chest and off his face. He's fucking looking messed up. But then monsters show up at the gates, big ones. It's a I thought he beat the demon king, and the the the, the, all, the, the populace immediately turns on him. He's always like deathbed, and it's, yes. it's like, oh, he probably just one ran away fucking at the last minute. What a fucking joke of a hero! And fucking Hulk is seeing all, hearing all this, and seeing this, and seeing his brother, and then Alicia is just like, Hulk, buddy, keep it together. And we're seeing those negative emotions, you know, well up. This is obviously why it stems from is that we did everything right. We did the heroes, we did the hero bit, we helped people out, and it still wasn't good enough. Like the minute you fucking put you put a foot wrong, they turn on you. Uh, so yeah, I remember now. He's decided the fi- his final thing is I have to go and defeat the demon lord because clearly he's come back to life again. Based mm-hmm. on the very flimsy scientific information we have uh, as to how the world works. Well, Ganon keeps coming back in all those Zelda games, so there's some like uh, precedence for this. That is true. People are always trying to resurrect a demon lord. I yeah. these sort of uh, stories. Yeah. So that's kind of him. Yeah, he'll see like you know the truth for himself from both sides. He's seen like you know what. Demon civilization is capable of and see what demon demon civilization is capable of just kind of come down on a side of fun and saying this fun is this isn't their fault at all. Fun humans are jerks. <laughs> uh yeah. So we're still in his flashback at the end of the episode, and I suspect we'll be in there for a few more episodes to get. A little bit, yeah. For a spell. Uh then we've got uh Hey, Bulbuster episode two, The Kingdom of Snow. Is that, no, I've got Dr. Stone. have got. Did I, did I, co- I had these episode titles in and then I copied them over with the rock. Uh, if we go for Bulbuster, it's. No yes. money! No ship either! Do we want to survive? Is there a brand Nami Dome? Uh, yeah, because for a while there I had Helk and Dark Gatherings episode titles in the wrong order. Uh, yes, so how do we get around the problem of. The bad CG monsters just don't not have them in the just episode. Talk about them. This is all admin. This is all like you know, getting to the heart of the matter of like running a struggling small business. How do you go and dig yourself up out of this hole? Sassy new PR campaign, sparkling fresh is the new face of the company. Uh, we also get introduced to a character who. Uh, is a scientist who works at the company who our heroes deliver the corpses of the monsters to. And he's mm-hmm. designed, he looks a bit like the actor Ricky Takeuchi. I was like, look, having to look up to see whether they got him in to play him. It's very <laughs> weird seeing that face. Very rectangular head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like one of the, uh, the bosses in Yakuza Zero. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, he plays, but it's not him playing, it's somebody playing a type of him. But yes, it's like the character design is not the character design you normally see on the head scientist. And he's so surly to our heroes. It's just, oh, well, they're, they're, they're driving like the thing into it's like we got off and drop this off him, and fun. You gotta be in before five because they're fucking really grouchy here and they hate having the fun deal. But it's like, I you know, like, and intake closer to every time. Most of quitting time. 
And he's just staring for and saying, oh, you got one, oh, for, sir, please, don't we have an investment for you, you know, and, you know, it would be a great help if you'd like, you know, if, if anything discovered about the mutants on the island, he's just like, you know, fucking doing that, he's looking at his watch, he's, as the guy's talking to him, he's just like not taking in any of it, he's just waiting to get out of here. Uh, he's like, yeah, I can't really tell you anything because you keep bringing him in dead. Now, if you could bring me in an alive one. An alive no one, thing. says Ogino. Oh. Not folks like you. Uh, and then we then we get to a bit like the business rumors that are going around their company. But apparently they're, they're already in this so they can get the... Uh, the rebuilding the, uh, contracts, contracts on the island. And the builders union is going to come down in like a, like a ton of bricks if, if that ever ever that gets out. So we can't be we can't get in, in their way either. We're kind of boned. Oh well. Yeah, the accountant character is so good. I love his character design. I love and he's not design. like being entirely a dick either. Like he is actually. It's kind of similarly to where, like, you know, like the, the main young lad, you know, he has to phone and restate. I'm not listening to this about, like, you know, because I'm a big robot nerd. I also want to help people, you know, fucking. So I'm sorry if I'm being too fresh with you. I'm very apologized. And he's the same way. I'm not being a cop. I'm trying to penny pinch. I'm literally, we're fucking, we're, we're going to go wonder in a month if I don't, like, you know, make some hard choices here. Like, I I, I care about this as well. It doesn't, it doesn't, might, might not be seen that as apparent, but it, it still counts. Um, so they decide to uh, <clears throat> rebrand and they get a professional in rather than use uh, his anime inspired <laughs> no. pieces. Uh, well, he it, it, it gets a maze straight because he knew him from, uh, knew from university. It was, it was hard to go with this one. Something kind of, you know, something like, you know, very clean, very like, you know, like, to the viewer, like, you know, I'm going to go like, with Western letters so now, it's more kind of standing out. It's just like, but but my Evangelion knockoff logo. This is what this is what we discussed. It's like, oh, trust me, I'm one. This one. Who's the graphic designer here? Come on, get Bandai on your ass or any of those guys, right? Or oof, that's... the cop would have a freak out if that happened. Um, then they take some publicity photos of the robot, which upsets, I can't remember her name, the the very quiet, pink-haired woman. Ari, Mu, Ari, Zu, uh, yeah. 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 Mm. Anyway, she, yeah, she's quite stoic, and, uh, and he's been kind of getting this, like, in the neck as well. He's getting a bit too, a bit too fresh and like, you know, when they're like on a truck bringing the specimen back in, it's just like, oh, oh yeah, if one like this, it's monstrous, it's going to splat, you know, they don't seem to run bad, don't run bad, they haven't done it for them, keep it with so it's like, well, actually, there was this thing, incident, you know, before I had to evacuate, I would have showed up first, and then, like, you know, they got out, and they, like, uh, killed six people, like, you know, ate most of them, and then they sent the from police, and then the fun day, if one ate some of them as well, it was a whole fucking thing, and they evacuated the entire island. And then the poison gas came, uh, that's what I was like, like oof, that's just some bad luck right there. So, yeah, you know, if actual people used to live there, man, and uh, don't be fucking going off about, like, you know, if you just go onto the island and take, like, cool photos, months of devastation while I was once somebody's home, like, in recent memory, that'd be a great way to sell the company, wouldn't you agree? Uh, so she takes the photos, of, she takes the memory card with the photos on it and hurls it into the uh, dock. Mm. Uh, and then at night, they have another confrontation and he explains his position and how much of his life he's poured into this robot. Uh, mm. And you shouldn't think that he's just doing this because he thinks that life is a video game. Um, and then says, you got to say something to me, please. Can you say, no, why, why do you never respond to me? Uh, and then the next morning he mm. finds a slightly damp uh, memory card in his inbox. Uh, well, she's she's when she's kind of out there, and, and she's like, you know, the new signage. You know, she's just like, it's not a scowl, but it's not quite a smile. But it's just like, you know, the various like, you know, it's like two degrees angled upwards. You know, it's just like, I think I really got true to it. And now it's just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> I don't know. Um, like. She's kind of just kind of trying to like have a dig in for and saying, just not special about this robot. Like anybody can pilot this with enough training. It's fun saying that's the idea. Anybody could pilot this with enough training. I wanted to make this like you know thing that like you know the more people can like, can work these the better, the more help we can offer. That's it's literally the point. 
Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's fun interactions. It remind the thing it will it reminds me of as well as the obvious ones is the Nesco. Um, yeah, yeah. In some of the character interactions. Um, it's like because there you that, go, dude. Dude is mad about it. It was the petty counting side of things because that's definitely in the Nesco. Um, mm. Because you've got the yeah, you got the one guy who's essentially the assigned accountant character. Um, yeah, there's not really like a dude like that in pat labor. It's just like if they, no. it's usually it's, it's usually more like concerned with like you know fucking the the chief of police coming down because they were fucking in the news too much. That's usually what their problems are. Um, yeah, I really love this. The animation really stands out when you haven't got much of the robot or any of the monster. It's uh, there's some really great character animation. Even just them driving the truck to make the delivery. There's a bit where they do a turn, and he's like his eyes pop out of his head at, at one spot, uh, mm. which I thought was like a completely unnecessary touch, but it's just a really nice touch to do. It's good I, because it's just good lighting up. No fun. There's two fellows in the if, in, a, in the front of a truck, you know. We got they're just talking to each other. Like you got to like do something in there. But it was like you know, just little touches in there as well. And again, he's getting too fresh. He's he's, he's going off too much about you know fighting robots. I guess was just like child's piece. Just like the little tighten on on of his hand on the steering wheel. It's just like little intricate breath as well. It's like some good acting to go along with it, like as well. It, yeah, the body language stuff is fantastic. Characters, uh, it's like it's doing what I wanted of like these incidental character or minor characters. have got great character designs as well. Um, still, play- and we get the dog as well this episode. So <laughs> that was just a nice little thing that the fun day when chairman of the company has just been told we're going to go under in a month unless we've won like like writership. And it's just like you know, it comes on. It's just oh, I'm just like it's just so fucked. But he's it, able to forget about for a minute for and think, ah, you still love me. Ah, you know, my, little, my, little, my little terrier, you know, mascot of the company, company dog. Uh, and still a sign of the other main character who's in the opening at the end credits. The fella in the glasses. What's his name? Not Is no, he no. going to be like the, uh, the waitress in uh, Gurren Zedai who won't show up until the last episode? <laughs> or the second season, I think, really, for her. Uh, I just wanted to, 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 to get I, I quite, quite a couple there in the opening and in closing, you know, who are going to be brought in and out. I guess, yeah, I guess, because they're part of like, you know, or attached to a big conglomerate. Um, maybe they're going to have some interactions with them, even though they've rebranded now from we're going to remove the construction ream, but just to make people just show people that, that, we, that we're, we're honest, we're not trying to, we're not in this for any kind of like, uh, uh, self interest here. We're trying to achieve one. We're a pest control environmental concern group now. And then we've got Jujutsu Kaisen, episode 36, Dull Knife. Mm. Dull Tongue, apparently. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll keep it, I keep it kind of brief because this is kind of a, a transitional sort of thing. Uh, Inodori and Fushiguro recover uh, Eno, the the guy who got thrown off a roof basically in the last episode by a resurrected uh, Toji Zenin. And it's like, he's not, he's not great, but he's not dead. So um, we're going to have to change plans here. Um, Inodori, you go on and take out uh, that last veil because this must like work like, you know, or there, there seems to be a kind of three of these. You know, we, we took them all out, but maybe two of them are decoys, so you got to go and find one. i got to take care of Eno, uh, so I got, I'll just like, I get back to him if I can. Sure thing. And oh, yeah, but before you go, oh, yeah, don't don't die or I'll kill you. And I, I, I know the whole deal. It's like, yeah, yeah, you listen. Let's again a little ant interaction, like an off one saying, just saying, you could have said, be careful, but one said, no, I'm always telling you, don't die or I'll kill you in a very hard boil sort of way. Um, and then that Toji Zedlin's body is like overcome, like, you know, can we take con- control of his host? And we're getting like a more of the side of thing is like, you know, where it's like, does, does the body or the soul take precedence in a curse technique? And does it vary from one to one? Because going by the normal rules, so the so I shouldn't be able to take over the body in this technique, but now it has because I guess his personality is so strong and overrides whatever he goes gets put put, put into. He's going to go out and cut some people up, starting with this old lady. But she was bad anyway, so Miss Bix had maybe cancelled each other out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the bulk of it is uh, an underground encounter where uh, Kugisaki and 
just one of like the kind of middle manager types you usually kind of setting up bills and keeping the crowd under control. Uh, they're getting like menaced by that little weasel with the blonde ponytail, and he has like the the sword with a hand on the end, and the hand is like thing from the Adams family. You can kind of crawl around and like you know. <laughs> Hang on to walls, and if you kind of throw it, you can just you can punch people in the face with it. I don't know if you're throwing the sword, you'd probably throw the pointy bit, but I guess you just want to get a cheeky dig on them. So he's kind of like hassling them around because like he's putting up, up a good fight, you know, because in the last encounter was when they were attacking the school, and she's gotten a lot better at hammering nails and the things and making stuff explode with bad luck. Uh, but it's not quite there yet. Um, and this guy's about to fucking like pull him away. and Making his way there very, very slowly and carefully is one uh, overtime office worker, Kento Nanami. And he's just recently came across like, the body of, of Ichiji, who was like the main sort of like uh, dude with glasses, middle manager died. And he's, he's been, you know, him and a few other, other guys have been like cut up really bad and they're dead outside. And he's coming in, he's got his jacket off, he's just slowly walk, walking into the scene. He takes off the tie, and the tie is also kind of like got the kind of the, the markings on, so it works for this technique as well. He's just wrapping it around his fist, and he comes in, and he fucking just fucking comes in and fucking clocks this guy, and he fucking puts him through a wall, because he wants one thing and one thing only out of this guy. <laughs> he just says, "Where is the location of Satoru Gojo for?" And the guy's going, "Hey, take it easy, man. Don't want no trouble. See?" And it just puts him through another wall again, and just gets him. And obviously, now he's a bloody mess. Where's the location of Starter Rugojo? And it's just him just going off on this dude for like what feels like 10, 15 minutes, uh, just seeing a real little piece of shit get what's coming to him. And he doesn't get the hatchet. He doesn't get like, you know, a million money or the questions. He just sees this guy as just a piece of shit who fucking took out the folks who were doing their jobs out there. And if, if we know Kent and Anami, he thinks no, just no, just no job is worth dying for. No job is worth fucking like, throwing your life away on if one, and you better get paid for it uh, in, in either case. And let's see him just knock the shit out of this guy. He's very Jojo esque, like seeing uh, the villain get theirs. And it's a nice little like thing as well. Like um, it's just punching the dude through a wall. But you get a little bit of the flash of, of the gauge uh, that goes to his technique where he hits it in the right spot. So you know, it like doubles the power or more. So he's just like, Critical hitting this dude every fucking swing he takes into him. <laughs> uh, and then it closes up with Itadori. He's like, you know, making his way down. He's got one relayed information to. Oh, wait, though, actually in the middle of there, like, May May um, is <laughs> making a short work of the the goon that got sent after her. He's just kind of having a cool speech about my technique is like, I'm only able to control crows. So I had to fire focus on getting better at things. But then, like, you know, I met somebody who should be like, maybe you should Nika actually is pretty good after all. I don't know how it makes her better at swinging a giant axe, but I suppose it helps anyway. And does away with him, and then Ghetto turns up, and it's just like, are you really Ghetto? Because I'm pretty sure you died last year in that whole thing. And I had a little bit. And then Dory runs into the, let's just kind of cursed, what's him call it, homunculus is uh, Choso. He's the dude who can, who can control the blood and shoot like a laser, which is the first thing he reaches for when they run into each other in, on the, in this underground subway a bit. So this is kind of like an all little one that um, we've been kind of looking forward to, as I've said before. But just like, I like, just like the amount of dedication and the amount of fucking animation finesse they put into um, Nanamin, just knocking the absolute shit out of this little bastard. <laughs> Just the detail, you see like, like the vein popping, like you know, like anatomically correct vein popping on the side of his head. He's just fucking like getting this guy up in a scruff of his hair and just like questioning him again before he puts him through another wall. Uh, this is really satisfying, this beat down. <laughs> Which I'd forgotten about entirely. Um, it's good to see him here, in here again. However, I know that this is going to be a fairly harrowing experience for a lot of these characters and it's not over yet. <laughs> Then we've got Dr. Stone returning. New World, episode 12, The Kingdom of Science's Counterattack. Mm. In which our, the heroes who back aren't, in. Oh, aren't turned into stone are observing that the uh, islanders are throwing the statues overboard. Is what you said to them. Uh, so we've got to uh, get them from the bottom of the sea and uh, recover them. Meanwhile, uh, they suspect there's a spy among the uh, prospects for the uh, chief's bride. 
So they've tied Ruvesa's uh, stone body to a tree, and they're having them successively hit it with a mallet. Um, and so if you... <laughs> get off of little chunks, and if you have yes. a radio control, it's like, you know, rat disguised RC cars, and then uh, <laughs> taking them in, like, just like, like pebble by pebble uh, back to home base and reassembling yes. him. So Which... Harking gets the message yeah. in her earpiece saying, what to do, what to do. Well, yes, just destroy him completely into rubble and send it, uh, which com, uh, completely sends uh, Gidro into a panic. But they fill in the rats, and then she points out that I bet he'll say, uh, what is it, the line is about how important <laughs> it is? I'm the man everything. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the second man. Uh, I'm, I'm the first man on earth to revive from perfection twice in succession. I was like, well, I had this honor. It's like he's telling them well done for choosing him to be the first one to be resurrected. And uh, they do, that's exactly where he comes in. <laughs> yes. uh, I like the fact that, the, that nobody comments on it yet, that when he is resurrected, his scars are gone. Mm, they imagine that it's, it's like, you know, oh, this is like a, a clean, recent petrification, so the top there hasn't been calcified. So, uh, like, what happened before it was like, you know, that's like, you know, it's like cracking out an outer layer and getting to the actual, like, uh, petrified body underneath it, but is this calf who's more like a cold, you have a cool, like sparkly effect in it? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, because there's been no wear and tear this time. The uh, the scarring you had from whatever cracks has disappeared, he's no longer got his blue fingers. Mm. Um, so then the rest of the episode is how do we get the people off the bottom of the ocean? Uh, we're gonna have to build scuba gear. Mm. Uh, very kind of shoddily because you haven't got Kaseki, so the first thing we got to bring back Kaseki because he's the only one I said, I don't have to make this stuff good. Only thing I can, I can, best I can do is just one rip shit off of off of our our, our only car and just fucking jury rate that together into what we need. In this case, a pair of scuba tanks. And he's going to be very upset when we do revive it that we've destroyed the vehicle in order <laughs> to revive it. Um, Luckily, we have a guy with eidetic memory who can remember where everybody was thrown and which parts belonged to which people. Um, so they will, they, the pair of them go down, and uh, Soyez is the one with eidetic memory. Uh, isn't yeah. They um, Ryusei and Soyez go down, but they discover that Kaseki is buried too deep in the sand, and neither of them are strong enough to pull him out. What to do? What to do? Oh, the there's a guy the, here who's super strong. They're talking <laughs> on the rope. Like, what could it possibly mean? It's too, they, they, they've got four months of area left, but it's not, it's, it must isn't one to come back and say, no, he's just like, he's doing it. Let me try. It's Morse code. No, Japanese Morse code. Then you gotta, 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 gotta break it down. But each of them get their little kind of bit to do, like the fucking like the ninja, like you know, fun calculation thing. They're Senku calculating how much air they have left, like based on like you know the average like in air intake of a, of a human male of, of these age and then their fitness. And then he has to go break it down. So it's fun. He's doing dot dot dash dash. So fun must be like you know something that begins. You no, know, it wouldn't be like you no know, a syllable. It'd be something like the signifier. So it could be like you no, know, it's a letter. I'll be pertinent to the situation. What that letter be? Letter R. He wants. Revival fluid, you know, fun. It's just like it, they don't even say the answers. It's like comes down the rope of fun saying, Yeah, I knew they'd get that. They're too smart for me. Let's hold all the pieces of tied you together, or this un- hold it uh, under his chin, and wallop. We've got uh, a super strong guy at the bottom of the sea. You have to quickly give him the scuba mask uh, or the oxygen so he can breathe, and then we can pull the three parts of Kaseki out of the ocean, and we get. The amazing triumphant image um, of them surfacing beside the boats. Everybody's super happy that they've brought three parts of Kaseki back, and next mm. week they can stick him back together again. Um, yeah, this was the point. I was like, "This is the great thing about the show is because it's 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 a science fiction show with one science fiction idea. What if there's a device which turns people into stone, and then you lead to like surreal moments of triumph like this?" <laughs> Where it's like, here's three pieces of our friend. It just, it was like, yeah. <laughs> this would be like, you know, from pivotal dead scene anywhere else. It's like, like, oh, we found, we just always found left of him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, it has the idea. They kind of like go through every kind of permutation it can possibly come up with. It was. 
So nothing is ever like out of place. Because, you know, this is like a comic about like logical progression and trying things out and like, you know, everything follows rules, even crazy petrification beams. Yeah, and that, that and that's the general thing is like that Senku has to figure out what are the rules of this thing. I've figured out one rule, which is how to reverse it. I've got to figure out other things about it. That we need to grab it. We're going to grab it with, because uh, that's the thing we shocked Ryusei, because he's got, oh, of course, you're going to grab the petrification device, and his, in his head, it's a kite. So they're like, no, a drone. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> dream what? bigger, my friend. Uh, man, I love this show. I love this series. Even though I know exactly where it's going, because all three of us have read the comic all the way through and weekly as it was coming out. But it's so I've seen the, the execution of it. Uh, and those does seem this kind of work as well as just like they revive Taiju in his mind saying, I don't need I don't, to, to talk to you. You can obviously tell I'm so hot blooded. You can kind of like guess what I'm, I'm thinking right now. It's like, <laughs> just like, like a, a kind of, he's got like some kind of manly telepathy going on. <laughs> so naturally works better when you can kind of like, have a see and hear what's what's the situation is. <laughs> uh, then the final thing this week is Undead Unlock episode two Union. Rare you word in this series, which starts with un that you don't pronounce the un as on. Um, yeah, you come out, folks. We've mostly dispensed with the um body sex romp stuff from the past time. In fact, a Total refusal of it at the end of the uh, yes, episode. Yes, just, just to underline it, if I'm saying, oh, fun, fuck that, we're not about this. Because you can't just, like, you know, have your way with me, Andy, because there's obviously there's, like, a, like, there's a relationship here between, like, you know, of the level of affection I hold for somebody and then the uh, corresponding, like, you know, like, unlock effect when it lands on you. So, like, take, take my granddad, for instance, he just kind of got gross teeth and like, you know, I had to kiss him on the cheek, but I didn't like him that much. He used to use like a, a busted hip, so that's like nothing really too serious. So you gotta like fucking do, you can't be doing anything that to me if I'm saying, you're right, doll face. I guess I got some romance here. I'll, I'll make you say I love you fun if it's the last thing I do, by gosh. I'll keep you alive until you fall in love with me because those guys, they're going to be after us now. There's more of them and some of them have got powers like we've got. But luckily, I'm both Wolverine and Cable, and I have secret caches of equipment all over the West, all over the world <laughs> that I have access to. Uh, actually, they're after us right now. Here, here comes two of them. Yes, we get the very fun thing of her, him putting her in that, like every bit of armor that he's got. Um, uh, he's like, yes, I'm going to yes. keep you safe while he's riding a motorcycle and sidecar in the least safe way possible, standing on the motorcycle, steering with one of his feet. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he used to be That's in the circus, true. probably. Yes, because the, the other big theme of this episode is, how old are you, Andy? Um, well, well at least 1879, or whatever day yeah. is written on his, on his peck. It's just like, well, I I'm, I'm probably must have been that much. Uh, yes, they're attacked by two weirdos, one guy in giant power armor, but designed to make it look like it's giant power armor wearing a suit, and a uh, Chinese man, martial artist. Uh, do they give him a name? Do any of them get names in this? Uh, yes. Well, we know, we know the big dude is Void and the other dude is Shen. I don't did, did, did I even say it out loud. I, that's the thing. I was like, have they revealed their names yet in this? Um, they get to fight with them, and then we get to the crux of what this show is going to be about for a while. Is these people have got powers? What are their powers? How do they work? We know they stop something. What is it they're stopping, and how do they stop it? Why does the enemy stand user stand ability? And you don't get any extra, like you know, things with your ability either. Much like a stand, it has to work within the parameters of it. So you gotta get creative with what you do with it. Encourage yes, critical but, thinking and not pulling stuff out of nowhere in the last second. Yeah, because that's that's the thing they stress in this episode is like Andy is ahead of everybody in using his powers because he's so much older than everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the position they're in is Andy is in front of the armored guy and he can't move. He periodically can't move. Um, meanwhile, 
Uh, Foucault is in front of the martial artist who is supposed to kill her straight away, but he's chatting with her uh, and she can't move. So she thinks it's the, the martial artist. But Andy points out, no, you can still move the top half of your body. It's your legs you can't move. So it's two separate powers, similar, but not the same. We get we get the additional visual clue of the viewer that we keep on getting close ups of eyes and yeah. of of Shen the martial artist this one eye closing the other eye opening, uh, going back and forth as he's looking backwards and forwards at different people. Um, but Andy's quickly to work out what the guy in the armor is. It's unavoidable. So when he's going to make a strike, you can't move until you've been hit by it. Mm-hmm. However, that only accounts for like you no know, actual like moving of, of your muscles and so forth. It doesn't count for it. natural things that like kind of move through your brain. So if I just like you know we're gonna have a little tussle here and I'm gonna kind of like you know land, I'm gonna regenerate and freeze in place, picking finger guns at you, and you're gonna go out in front of me. Well, here's something I, a little trick I've picked up in Vietnam. Maybe if I regenerate really quickly, I, I can shoot off my like uh, past my violet bullets. Just me kind of fly around with blood feet. Check this out. <laughs> And you should off, off the end of his, off, off his fingertip like, like a bonus as hypersonic speed right right between the eyes or right into the eye of the armor anyway. Yeah, because that's how he finishes him off. Uh, before that, we he Fuko like touches his chest again, and they're like, ah, he, she doesn't like him that much. They won't be that much on look. And then she's like, it's like, not like I like you or anything. She's blushing, but there might be a whole load of unlook about to come your way, and uh, everybody gets hit by a truck except for her. Um, and then Andy runs into a building from the other two and discovers the building is due for demolition. That's how much would look he yeah, had dropped on him. Um, yeah, so I think but, I, I, I was like thinking there, I think there was like a, a newspaper or one poster that you saw him like earlier in the episode saying, you know, oh, demolition happening downtown today. Uh, so. uh, we also get dialogue between Foucault and Shen. Who Shed explains like, oh, we're from this organization called the Union. They they have ten negators. If there was space on the of, of those ten, you two could join. Uh, and so that's where Andy gets the idea. Oh, we'll just kill you two guys, and then we can join. I, I know they chased me for ten years after I escaped fifty years ago from the prison they had me in. Um, but. Uh, yeah, we, I, if it saves us from being chased, I can look. I can protect you, Foucault, and we'll just do whatever these guys tell us to do. You know, so I'll do that to protect you. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the lead into where Foucault tries to force Andy to have sex with him? Uh, rather, uh, I guess kind of like you know, he's like going to he's going to these lengths to like you no know, to protect her. So yes. I should go to the same lane to know to protect like me because if if we want to be in this together, like you know, I want to show you that, that I'm all in on this. And he's just like fun saying like, um, and let's say like you know, if they if they didn't do wind up killing us, no, I I'd hate like you know if 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 I died or got in danger before I was able to like grant you your wish. So we should just do it right now, and then it'll be then it'll be fine over with. No, I don't want want to to, to to lock you away for fifty years. You might never get away. And so he's like, oh, hang on, it'll be fine. Like. Don't fun do don't 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 ever fucking do that kind of shit again. Like you know that's that's like have more respect for yourself. You know I I respect you like a lot more than that, and I, I do now anyway. <laughs> but, oh, it's because he hesitates to kill Shed with the sword. That's the, the lead into that spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so he's highly mentioned... amused by this. Yes, he leaves. He mentions that well, you've killed one guy, so he needs to kill another one. Uh, does he say? Yeah, he's, they've got to go to Russia to find this other person to uh, mm. finish off. Uh, Russia, vodka. I hook up with my old war buddies. Well, get some, get a party together. Go find this, this wherever this goon is, and take him out. Straightforward, right? Yeah. Yes. What could possibly go wrong? Um, just like you know, I was like uh, this, like kind of impressed with how they are putting together the setup or the whole thing at this point. And there's union after union, you have one killing on the seat, and then it's like immediately it's just like the union are all kind of one thing that actually a guy says, "Oh, like no, you, you could kill me, or I could kill somebody else on the kind of council." It isn't like they all get along either. You get this kind of sense that there's like people at, at, at cross purposes already within the union. 
better would have used for that. And then it's like that's kind of a kind of way to kind of always brings them and then and then I suppose seeing kind of like the range of people who are the gators out there. They're they're similarly not one way or the other. Yeah, it's uh it's running at about the uh the martial pace of two chapters per episode based on this one. Hmm. Uh, which is kind of what I was expecting. How many episodes in Undead Unlock? I don't know how long. Is this a two core? This series? one is, yeah. Okay, so I've got, I've got a vague idea about where they might be finishing it. And yeah, yeah, I guess on that respect, then the lengthy opening in episode one makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we're getting like the first, like, uh, first of all, kind of the textual kind of impact of when, like, you know, oh, we've like we've clocked what your uh, negation is, and you get when you're unavoidable. And it's not quite kill a kill level, just like dunk, 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 um, yeah. but not everything can be. You know, I kind of take this, like, you know, this, dun, 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 you know, ah, it's this, that's because it's like, it's, it's, with the comics, how the comic presents the uh, the names as they appear, yeah. But it's got some some real kind of like big moments in there for like you know it's <laughs> just as a reminder you know in this cool scene my thing is dun, 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 and she's a cool pithy like one liner that that's like ties into that and it's just ah yeah you gotta, you gotta have some good fucking like selling of that now and this is really it's really important uh, down the line and we get the opening and closing for the first time as well um, the opening is really trying to class this thing up isn't it. <laughs> It is, yes. Uh, Not opposed yeah. to it. Like, you know, it's... Uh, from reading, like, the kind of comic it is, you know, like, you know, um, I don't want to kind of pick up on, on, on too much, really, of, like, what folks feel one way or other about, like, you, know, you get to kind of things here and there, but not the same as, the, as other things that... Uh, so kind of even seeing that opening and seeing, like, this these kind of versioning of the characters in it now and the kind of push is like, oh yeah, it's like we, we kind of see these these this in, in different ways or got different ideas about us, you know, they're drawn to it by whatever uh disparate elements or or maybe all of them. Uh yeah, and obviously we get to see some of the uh feature characters uh mm. in that. Um and then the uh, ending is even more re- removed from <laughs> the look of the show. <laughs> Um, I guess I can kind of see what it's alluding to in the ending, um, but the story in the cartoon won't get to what it's alluding to yeah. for a while. Actually, I was had a good ending in animation with Dr. Stone, actually, because it was like the, the sand uh, drawings really really like detailed uh ones there and then there's a cute little bits for like no it's a thing but it's gonna kind of wipe that off and change the expression <laughs> uh some cool stuff in there i think that was everything i watched this week was there anything extra you watched um i f- i finished out what was like the first four that were initially offered of friar and uh and yeah, it's it's kind of fun following this one around, and then she takes on an apprentice, like. But it's sort of this exercise in like, look, it's all well and good for you to kind of loaf around and sort of like take this at this pace because you're like a quasi immortal elf. We're fucking mortal beings, like you know. And actually, actually need your help or your and your guidance to like progress in my own studies as being a mage. It's just like, oh yeah, it's just like very kind of gradually and very kind of like maybe late in her in her fun life. Um, learning to kind of maybe have some regard for other people you know you kind of see like you know she's kind of a bit of this distant kind of frosty um when she's flashing back to her adventuring days but it's just kind of thinking oh that's like you know just kind of remember the camaraderie that like, you know they had in a different light now from now that now that most of them are gone uh doesn't it doesn't feel like you no know, very kind of like maudlin or anything uh it just feels very very mellow and very low energy. Um, the kind of only kind of threat that's come across so far is like, you know, oh, the seal on this demon is about to break. You know, he was like, you know, sealed away 50 years ago and he came up with it, with, 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 with that, this killing spell and you know, all, everybody like, you know, got hit by it died. But they come out and they kind of, well, I guess we're just going to destroy him now then. Uh, oh, really? Not we see them? Yeah, I'll destroy him right now. So they go in and it's, he always talk about, oh, he's just like, 
fucking demon lord. He's this killing spell. But like, yeah, but he was petrified and sealed inside her. And in 50 years since, like, like magical magic magicians like studied the spell. And now what he called it the killing spell, Zarathrax, is just like your regular, just like, you know, magic missile. Now everyone knows how to do this. So uh, <laughs> he's come on, he's come back and just blow him up. It's it's no problem at all. It's like uh, things like that with, with, with the kind of passage of time as well. It's like, yeah, I suppose it would make sense that like in the 50 years that, you know, it might have, would have advanced some, uh, particularly when you got weirdos like this going around trying to gather up every spell. Uh, I watched a bit of uh, Under Ninja again as well, the second one of that. Uh, I think it is, it'll probably have a serious kind of like, you know, overarching plot. It's, kind of, it's, it's alluding to it right now, in fact, but it seems content to just be a, a little bit of a, of a stupid comedy. Um, it really is like, you know, not just the main dude, all these people, if they if they had ninja abilities, what would they do with them? Uh, probably suffer self-interest, really, like, like stealing beer or framing people for whatever like that. But also anybody could be a ninja. Like there's a there's a foreign assassin who's like, you know, oh, I want to be a ninja. He's some like Russian dude. You no, know, he's an assassin in his own right, but he's like, oh, I want to be a ninja. No, that's, that's much cooler. He goes down like I think the employment office and the clerk there says, Listen, buddy, we get a lot of guys like you. There's like one or six people around you right now, it's probably a ninja. That's a guy saying it, throw a rock hit a ninja. If I'm like, no, me, I'm a ninja. That crazy homeless man in the park who's offering everybody his breast milk, he's a ninja too. So watch out for him. And apparently a very high up ninja. It's a very like tense meeting between uh, that, that guy and, and the handler um, in the wake of like uh, this Russian dude turning up and causing havoc for them. Uh, but it's all this seems like an old handle, like, which, like a very like stupid comedy with ninjas in it. Uh, so I don't know. It's, I'm just intrigued by it. It's something I wasn't yeah, really expecting. I probably check it out because it was a show when it was on the schedules at different times. Because uh, I think it was supposed to have come out uh, more recently than it has done. Uh, but I was interested in watching. But I think it was just like. Uh, too many things to watch this season, particularly because in a couple of weeks we'll have Pluto to watch or to discuss. We'll oh, have it yeah. to watch next week. Uh, those are one that. hour episodes, uh, so maybe I should check in on the, on the ninja while I have a chance. Oh, it's a separate show. Let's, let's go, Pluto. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but I guess with Pluto, at least I, I've read the comic and it does appear to just be one volume per episode which also means it should move at a pace um unlike monster hmm. uh that's it then uh hopefully niall will be back not, no niall it's normally niall i'm having to say it's usually is, like, you know. Dwayne. yes uh a muscle memory on my mouth there um hopefully Dwayne will be back week. Charity, Otherwise, just uh you and me again uh, with more. Let's go. Goodbye. See you. Uh, hit that stop button and hit mm. the other stop button. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, the.